we thank Hashem that we're able to learn every day. It's just of learning we should have the best English immediately. Should be well. Okay, we're starting right after the Mishnah on 80B. Pay on the base. It says, Ibailu, the yeshiva has a question. Shemeris Yavim Shemesa. This is this uh, poor woman, her husband passed away without leaving her childless, and now she passes away. But there, there's a, a brother here of her husband that could bury her. There's also her father's, her, her, her own family that could bury her. So me, Kaibra, who's responsible for that? Yoshia Baal Kavrila, do we say that the inheritors of the husband have to bury her? The Kayati Ksuba? Look, she never ended, ended, get, ended up getting a Ksuba from her deceased husband because she's supposed to go right away onto the new husband, which is her husband's brother. So she never got a Ksuba. So what happens to the Ksuba now that she dies? The, they keep the Ksuba. So being that they're the inheritors, of her ksuba, they should pay for the for the, for the burial. Okay. Oy Dilma, or do we say Yoshi Av Kabrila? The Kayati Nechasana Nechnasima Yitzimima. You see, this is a, a, com a complicated case because she has two inheritors here. She has her ksuba, which is getting swallowed up by her husband's family. And she has her own Nechsim um, Malog property that she brought into the marriage, which is leaving the marriage now that she passed away, and it's going back to her, to her father. So because there's two inheritors, now there's a question of, well, which inheritor is the one that's going to pay for the burial? Then, if that marriage, if the if the Yavam doesn't want to marry her and they do chalitza, she gets the ksuba from her first husband. If he does marry her and then he divorces her, then she gets the ksuba also coming from the estate of the first husband. Well, um, Amram, Amram, Amram is going to try to answer this question. He says, Tashima, come and listen. The Tanya was taught in a brisa. She meres yavam shemesa. Exactly this case. She's waiting for the leveret marriage. She's waiting for her brother, to, for her husband, her husband's brother, to marry her, and she died. So Yersha, her inheritors, and it specifies Yersha Ksubasa, Those that inherit her ksuba, which is referring to her husband's family. They have to bury her. So we have a clear price that answer this question. The, the inheritance of her ksuba is also supposed to cover the... Her ksuba means money that they should have paid her when the marriage ends, which is either 100 coins or 200 coins, right? The ksuba, um, I'm not sure what's going on with the dowry. You know, nechse tzing barzal. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Uh, that's like a question mark right here. I'm not sure if it's referring to that as well. You know, you, you know what I'm saying? Nixi Malug. Because Nixi Tim Barzal, he basically takes possession of the whole thing. And the only thing is at the end of the marriage, he has to pay back the original value. It's different than Nechsi Malog, where she owns it the whole time. What do we say in the Mishnah? Ksubasa, ben chasim ayetzim ima b'shamim chalku yersheh ba'al yersheh Then we say that Ksubasa, makes sense. Makes sense. I just doesn't say it clearly. Rashi says that when it says ksuba, um, it doesn't it doesn't uh, explain what Allah is with this with the uh, the Okay, I gotta look it up. Um, 
whatever the case is, we know that those that, that the ones that inherit the ksuba, which the, the well, confusion has that ksuba has two meanings. Ksuba is the 100 or 200 coins that she gets um, because either she's a virgin or she's not a virgin, it's 200 or 100. So that, when she passes away, that's kept by the uh, husband's family. So that because of that, they have to pay for the um, they have to pay for the burial. Okay, that's clear, right? Amar Abaya, Abaya says, "Afanan We actually learned this in a Mishnah or a Brisa. The widow, it is where the husband passes away. She's supported by the estate, um, which is in the hands of the orphans, inheritors. And while she's there, also her income also belongs to them. She's living off the estate, just like it would be by her husband. But they don't have to pay for her burial. Why? Because look at what's about to happen here. She never got her ksuba yet. She decided instead of taking the ksuba to live off the estate. But when she does pass away, that ksuba was really hers. So who gets the ksuba? Her inheritors. So since the ksuba is about to leave the estate of the husband when she passes away, because her husband passed away first, so she should really be getting the ksuba. In our case, the husband passed away, but the, but she doesn't get the ksuba yet because there's another husband that's stepping in. But in a regular case, the husband passed away, she gets the ksuba. And it's a brother. Um, but in a regular case, she gets the ksuba. And so therefore, who pays for the burial is the, her relatives, not the husband's relatives that are going to inherit the ksuba. In the regular case, the husband passes away, she gets a certain amount of money. That was in the marriage contract. So what happened? So when she gets that money, who gets that money? Now she died. So who gets that money? So her inheritors get it. And so therefore they pay for the burial. Well, the orphans we were talking before are her husband's children. She may have other relatives. They don't have to pay for a burial because she's going to inherit the ksuba. Her inheritors that inherit the ksuba have to pay for the ksuba. Why do you have to specify that there's inheritors? Inheritors that inherit the ksuba. Sounds like there's other inheritors here. Aha, what are we talking about? Javier is a Shemer Siavim. Must be talking about the Shemer Siavim, this woman that's waiting for her leopard marriage. Because over there, she will have different inheritors. She has her husband's family that's inheriting her, and she also has, which is keeping the tzuba. And she also has her own family, which is getting the Nilsi Tzim Faisal. We see that would be the case in, in that mission as well. Amar Rava. Rava says, one second. One second. You're putting an obligation now, according to this, on the Yava. He, didn't, he never even married her. Now he has to pay for her burial. Says Valema, let the brother say, I'm just inheriting my brother. I'm not burying his wife. I'm just taking the money. Well, Amalea Baya Baya says, Well, you can't do that. You, we, we're going to come on you from both sides. He did the even. He does Halitza, then she gets the Ksuba and then he's down. He for sure doesn't have to There he's in between. He didn't do Halitza or Yiba. Well, she died before the... She, she, she thought about spitting. She died. <laughs> well, um, they come on him both two sides. Imach of Yairish, Yikbar if you want to inherit your brother, so then you have to bury his wife. That comes with the responsibility. You get the money, you have to pay for the, uh, the burial. If you don't want to bury her, so then you think ksuba, then pay her the ksuba. That was that was due to A Malay, so Rava responds, he says, 
what I really meant to say was the following. Ach, ani Yerush. I'm inheriting my brother. I'm just taking the money. I'm not burying his wife. Are you going to tell me that I'm keeping her ksuba? Which that really means that the obligation of burial. Ksuba and burial, are, are, are they come together. The fact that he keeps the ksuba means that he now has to bury her. The, the, um, in general, what happens when a woman passes away and her husband is still alive? He doesn't have to pay ksuba. No. But he does have to bury her. So that retaining of the ksuba comes with this obligation that he has to bury. That's that's what that would be used for. Okay, now, um, a, a rub is explaining the imishim ksuba. Are you going to tell me that I'm keeping the ksuba? This is the brother of the deceased husband. He says ksuba leinit imishim ksuba leinit ksuba likvis michayim. She doesn't have a ksuba. There is no ksuba. Why is there no ksuba? Because, yeah, but what he's claiming is, is that there is no dead deceased husband here because I'm replacing the deceased husband. So I just stepped right into the new husband. So then really you should be, if he's the husband, then you should be burying him. He did not do Yivam. He's saying, I was expecting to do Yivam. So when he says, yeah, there's a problem. Jonathan is, is asking, if he's claiming that he's the new husband, because he will, he would have been the new husband, then that, why doesn't he have the obligation to, to, to bury her? The husband would have an obligation to bury his wife. Well, What's really going to happen here? No, what's really going to happen here is from a careful reading of the of the ksuba. That's what he's claiming. Let's take a look. It says like this: Man shamat la de isla midrash ksuba. Who's the one that says that you can read the ksuba carefully, and based on that, get out of paying the uh, the ksuba? What does it say in the ksuba? Well, the Gemara doesn't quote it, but it says that in the Ksuba, it says that when you're eligible to marry someone else, then you'll take this money. Now, since she was never eligible to marry anyone else, so there is no Ksuba. It means it was never even owed to her. I'm not keeping anything from her because it, it was never a debt. Only debt to her would be when she's eligible to marry someone else. She can come and claim it. She, would, she, she died. And she was never eligible to marry someone else. Because she's a Shimon Yavu, which is waiting to marry the, the brother. So the, the, um, the claim, give me my ksuba, never came up. And so there is no ksuba. So he's saying, I don't know about any of this. All I know is that my brother passed away and I'm then only inheritor here. I'm taking the money. So what about the wife? Because that has nothing to do with me. But she has a ksuba that you're keeping. So she doesn't have a ksuba. She never was eligible for the ksuba. That would have come about had, had um, she been eligible to marry someone else. But because I was alive, she was never eligible to marry someone. Now, who's the one that holds that we can read the ksuba like this and say that she's not eligible for that? Say Bishamai. This is the opinion of Bishamai, and we'll see, we'll see why. Yeah, Bishami says, um, very interesting, uh, very interesting halakha. In between this marriage and her, uh, as if, as if, but she wasn't really, but she's still not eligible because of her visit to get married and so she. It's not her fault, but he's saying it's also not my fault. It was never, he's, he's coming with a very strict monetary uh, claim. He's ignoring uh, the other obligations. Yeah. 
And what does Beisham, how does this come about to be Beisham? Because Beisham said like this, that let's say a woman uh, has a message as a, uh, as a uh, based on a testimony of one witness, her husband passed away. So she's allowed to get remarried if she trusts this witness. Okay. What about her ksuba? Can she take her ksuba? Bishamai says that, look, look at the ksuba. Re look at the document. The document of the ksuba said that when you're eligible to marry someone else, then you can collect the ksuba. She is eligible. There's one witness that says that she can marry someone else. Bishamai said no. He also said, we trust one witness to for her to get married because we don't want her to be a tied woman, in a, a, a guna. But when it comes to monetary laws, she should start collecting money. That's, we don't, we don't trust her. She can't collect the ksuba and get married. She could just get married, but not the, the ksuba. The person can say, bring two witnesses that he died. The, I mean, the family of the husband. You don't have two witnesses. We're not giving the money. You want to go do, get married? That's uh, your own between you and God. But uh, for money, you need two witnesses. So knows Basil does not read the ksuba that when you're eligible to get married, you can collect this as Beishamai does. Beishamai reads it as you're eligible to get married, you can collect the money. It's okay, so Beishamai would be the one that would only permit the money to go to her once she's eligible to get married and she was never eligible to get married, so this would be a good claim. Well, if that's the case, but we also have a statement from Bishamai that uh, that if there is a document that is eligible to be collected, then it's considered like it's already collected. Yeah. Now, one second. What does this mean? Let's take a look. The Tanan, as we have a mission like this, Mesu, you see, what, what, what it means it's already collected means that the person that has to pay it, it's not like he's paying his own money to someone else. It's as if he's holding on to the other person's money and he has to give it up. Let's, let's say there's a debt. Uh, Ruvain owes Shimon a hundred dollars, and he has a document that um, Sh Shimon has a document that says that Ruvain owes the money. Right? Shimon has a document, so when he goes to Ruvain to collect the hundred dollars, is he taking Ruvain's hundred dollars or is he taking his own hundred dollars? You know, it's in in Ruvain's bank account. There's a hundred dollars there that belongs to Shimon. But whose hundred dollars is there? Is it Ruvain's until he gives it to Shimon, or is it, or is it Shimon's money in Ruvain's account? What's he paying? But the difference is going to be when there's a claim, like whose money is it? Uh, okay, so let's take a look at this. It says, Mesa uh, Balei so we're talking about a Saita, the going to the, uh, to drink the water. The husband dies along the way. We're expecting she's the one that was expected possibly will die, but he died, the husband dies. Bishamai says that, okay, she's remaining over there. Now, she may have committed adultery. Um, she should not, she does not deserve a ksuba if she did. Bishamai says, nevertheless, we don't know that for sure. He just had a claim against her and he died. She gets her ksuba. Bishamai says, either they drink, they, they drink the water, or they get, get the ksuba. Now, the problem is, oh, says, how could they drink? There's no husband here. It says, The man has to bring his husband to the kayan, but there is no man. There is no husband here that's going to do that. Ella, so we adjust what Bisil said. What Bisil really meant is that because they're not drinking, they don't get the ksuba. There's a machlikas if the woman gets the ksuba. Now, how could Bishamay say that she could collect the ksuba from the deceased husband's estate? She may have been an adulteress. She may not even deserve the ksuba. We know that the money belonged to the husband. She's claiming, maybe I deserve it. Well, maybe I deserve it doesn't mean that she should get it. 
right? Ain Suffolk might see me devada. We know that he for sure has it. The answer is because our Bishamish Daraim and Ligwes could go with me. It's not his, it's not that he has it. He was holding it in his account, but it's really hers. Okay, so back to us. If you say that it's Bishamai, that it's the opinion of Bishamai that's telling this brother that he's a, he can claim that she should not be, that, that he does not have to bury her because he's going to accept the opinion of Bishamai that says that you read the Ksuba very carefully and in there it says that you really don't, don't get the Ksuba. You can't claim it yet because, because she was never eligible to get married. But at the same time, if it's following the opinion of Bishamai, then Bishamai also says that the money was hers already from before. Okay. Now the Gemara asks another question, at least according to, uh, at least it, it, this, the, the following Gemara could be a follow-up of what we just said. It could be a going back on the basic premise that we, we're saying, that Rashi learns that it's a basic premise, that it's learns that it's a follow-up question. But be inan, what are you telling me that she gets the ksuba? The fact is, she never was eligible to marry someone else. Follow-up question, we see what's coming on. We're saying, According to Rashi, the Gemara's question over here is, what are you telling me that either way, either he marries, either, either he... If he inherits his brother, then he has to pay for his wife for his brother's wife's burial. Or he doesn't inherit her, and then he doesn't get, and then he doesn't inherit it. But once he's going to inherit, he has to pay. The problem is, is that he only has to give her the ksuba once she is eligible to marry someone else, and she's not eligible to marry someone else. I'm Ravashi. Yavam Namika for them. What are you talking about? The Yavam is the is the someone else. She does get the ksuba. Yeah, it seems like we're leaving off here that um, the husband's family has to pay for the ksuba and Rubba's claim is off. Because even if, the way Rubba said that the husband, that the brother of the husband can say, I'm just inheriting my brother. I don't know about his wife's uh, burial. I don't know anything. Um, that, that claim would go off because he would only be able to say that according to Beishame and according to Beishame at this point. You know what this is like? Someone has a Oh, I didn't know that. See why you come to the dot. <laughs> Very interesting. Okay. Very interesting. <laughs> See, this discussion between Rav and Abaya was a discussion. They must have been in Shiva together. Now, they each went their own way. And Rav sends to Abaya a follow-up to this question in the hands of Rav Shamei Barzera. He said, his question is like this. What are you saying? You're telling me that the Ksuba is already collected it's just sitting there in the in the in the house of the of the husband because the ksuba doesn't come to him until uh, until he passed. 
God doesn't come to her until he passes away. Well, Tanya, we have a Brysa. Now, the following um, Amira says, Rabbi Abba, Rabbi Abba Aimer, I have on the side that really is supposed to be Rab. And actually, Rab's name was Abba. And it's not supposed to be Rabbi Abba. Maybe it is Rabbi Abba. It's this, this tradition that this uh, Rab Abba is really Rav. And when we have in the Gemara, we says Rav Tanu Apalik, this would be a source that Rav is actually a Tana. It would be from this uh, Rab Abba here. Yeah. Whatever the case is, no. Rab Abba Imer Shalti Asumchas. Asumchas is a student of Rab Meir. Uh, Rab Meir was possibly considered a teacher of Rabbi Danasi. So this would be uh, a contemporary of Rav's teacher, Rabbi Danasi, would be Sumchas. says, I asked Sumchas, let's say someone wants to, be, uh, to sell the possessions that he's inheriting from his brother. The problem is he's also marrying his brother's wife. Now, all his brother's possessions go along with a lien on them that they in that they they're subjugated to the ksuba. They have to the subject to being uh, collected for this, so he can't really sell them. Well, let's say he wants to sell them. He has the, the time is right to sell whatever, and he can't because he has his wife there. That's like her ksuba is blocking the whole sale. So Kate said, so what should he do? Well, then Kayan, who let's say he's a Kayan. Is allowed to marry her, of course. It's Yibam, and it's she was a widow. It's allowed to marry her. So he asked the be fight. He should make her a nice meal, and at the meal, uh, he serves her some wine, and he convinces her to let me sell the uh, the the items that are subject to the ksuba. She says, "Yeah, okay, I, I forego on that." Okay. In Yisraelu, what does it say? In Yisraelu, if he's not a, a kayan, so Megar should get the yasa, divorce her once, and remarry her. He can't because he's not a kayan. A kayan. He can divorce her. He's already married her. He did already even. But he can't sell any of the any of the inheritance that he got from his brother. You see, makes the inheritance almost useless. Oh, it's wealthy. He's going to marry the wife, and then he gets this big inheritance, but he can't sell it because he and he inherited. Her. She doesn't inherit her husband. The husband, the new husband, inherits his brother. Oh, but he can't sell it. He can't sell it. So he divorces her. Then he owes her a ksuba. Then the ksuba is defined to a certain amount. And when he remarries her, so he has a certain amount that he has to give her, but it's not all of the... He's always allowed to sell his own property, even though everything is embedded in the ksuba. But it's just when he inherits his brother's estate that he can. See, it's worse when, it, when it's an elaborate marriage. See, what happens if he sold property? And then his wife wants to come and say, the collector, so then it's not the one. He died. He sold property and he died. So the wife can go to those purchasers and say, I have a document that precedes yours. Collect it. But that never stopped him from selling it. He was able to sell it. Over here, he can't even sell it uh, initially. Okay. So what should he do? He divorces her. Now, the al Kadaitan. And if the ksuba was already hers, why does he have to sell it? It's already hers. Just dedicate a certain amount to, of the of the to, as the ksuba, and then sell the rest. says all the time. If that's what you're going to uh, to ask. What about our own our own mission? Our mission said that he can't um, he can't say that the ksuba is on the table. In other words, you see this bag that this is this will be for your ksuba. He can't do that. Rather, all of his Possessions are indebted, are, are uh, have a lien on them that are going towards the ksuba. Now, if you want to say 
that Ksubal Nitna Libbais Mechayim that they can collect. But she's already, it's as if she's already collected it. It's as if it's just sitting in the husband's possessions. So then why don't you ask on the Mishnah, why wasn't he allowed to sell it? By asking from, from Rabbi Abba that asks Sumchas, and Sumchas says he has to divorce her. What do you mean? Just de- dedicate a certain amount. And the Mishnah said you can't. So Hassam, the Gemara says, I can't ask from the Mishnah because it's a Teba Kamash Malai. That's just giving us, giving advice. That he shouldn't do it. Not that he really can't do it. Maybe he actually could do that. Not he, he really could dedicate a certain amount of money and say that that would be for the ksuba, and the rest is he could sell. No, even before that, we're yeah. thinking that this is the pshat in the midst. All right, he did. He did yibam. Because if we don't say the sefer, the ktani v'chin liadam leyem radam leishtei harik subasim menachsa menachsa alalach ala shulpan. We have that statement twice in the Mishnah. Once in the Mishnah, it was talking about the leveret marriage, the new husband. He cannot tell, what does it say? He cannot say to his wife, his new wife, You're, the money for your exub is on the table. The rest I'm going to sell. He can't say that. Then we have the statement again by a regular husband and wife. He cannot tell his wife, the money for your exub is on the table. And the rest he's able to sell. Now, the truth is he is able to sell the rest. Must be that that statement, your, the money is on the table, is just giving advice. Not that he can't sell it, but he should actually be able to sell it. It's just, Ela, it's a teva kamash malan. Zachanami, it's a teva kamash malan. The only problem is, El Kasha. The whole problem was why, if in the Mishnah he's really allowed to sell it, it's just telling us it's a good advice not to sell it. Because you never know what's going to get lost. You should have extra there for the, for the ksuba. But, but Rababa said that he has to divorce her in order to be able to sell it. So that's already a, a question. Why would he have to do that if if the money was already in her, basically in her possession? Where it says, the Rababa nami like kasha mishameva. Rababa was also saying, I know that you can designate money for ksuba and then sell the rest. But that's not going to look good because when 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 um, when she sees that he's deranging all of the estate to be able to to sell property and all of this, she thinks that she's about she's she's getting ready. He's getting ready to divorce her. And that's going to be, that's going to put a strain on the marriage. On the other hand, if he actually divorces her and remarries her, then it's not because he doesn't like her. And they know that the whole divorce was just for the monetary, it was just a legal divorce to be able to sell that. And then he might look, you see, he remarried her. He wanted to, he loves her. The other way was she doesn't know if he loves her. All, all she sees is that he's designating things for her ksuba. And things so then and 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 then it just gets prolonged. Like how long is he gonna hold on to me? You know, so that's that's Ava. So Rababa suggesting, or some of us was suggesting to Rababa that um, they should divorce her and they marry her, that would be better for the man. We have a story now. You ready? Who gathered the Nafal Yabama from Padisa? There was a fellow that his uh, oldest brother, and his brother passed away. So the brother's wife is going to become the Yavama, and he's going to marry her. Well, shows up another brother. Now, there's a little um, like a, a catch over here. If someone Usually, what, what what's supposed to happen by Yibam is that the oldest brother consummates the, the, the marriage with his uh, sister-in-law, and then they're married. If he doesn't want her, he does Chalitza. But if any of the brothers show up and, throw, and give her a get, then it ruins all the brothers from doing Yibam. Now, even though there is no, there, officially there's no get over there, but because of a rabbinic laws, the, the, the get would mess up the Yibam and no one can do Yibam. 
they should not have to. He's this brother showing up and wants to give it. it goes by the oldest, but this brother just wants to give because he doesn't want to lose out on the inheritance. What happens if he gives again? The brother can't do yibam, and then they split the brother's inheritance equally. If the does yibam, if the if yibam, does, then he doesn't get anything, and he takes over the whole estate. There must have been a lot of money there, and he wants it to be split. So it goes like this. Amalei, my daita, the older brother wants to marry her, says, Mishim Nechsi, what are you doing? Why are you giving her a get? If you want the money? I'll give you the money. I'm not uh, uh, um, stingy. I'm not, uh, you know, I don't care if you take the money. I just wanted to marry her. I'll give you, what, what are we going to do? We're going to divide up the state? I'll, we'll divide the state. Just don't give her the get. I'm doing yibam and, okay. Well, I'm Rav Yasef. Rav Yasef says, given that Rav Anamle Lisbon, was he allowed to sell the brother's estate? No. He was indebted to her ksuba. So, Afagav Dezovin, Layavis Vinis Vini. So then, even if he would sell it, it would not be a good sale. So he can't give it to the brother either. He, he, he generously told the brother, don't worry, I'll share it with you. But that is nothing because he has no right to share it because he can't even give it, he can't even sell it because it's only that it's his wife's ksuba. So that whole statement is nothing and the brother just gets nothing. Well, all the, bro- yeah, all the brothers all the brothers have some sort of zika, have some sort of attachment. If the oldest brother doesn't do it, then the, the next one does it, then the next one. Now, if any one of them does yibam, that would be acceptable. If anyone does chalitza, that would be acceptable for all of them as well. But the get just messes up that from now on, they can only do chalitza. It spoils the yibam. Yeah. It's sort of like my, it, it, there, there's a get in there, and there's also a maima, which is a, a quasi condition. The get doesn't really work. You still need chalitza after the get, but it, it messes it up enough that you can't do yibam. And the maima, uh, the opposite would be a condition, like sort of designates her to one husband. Yeah, but you give, give a get before you give a get before you divorce is really what's happening here. It would mess up the yeah. The get would come before the, because you still need to do chalitza. Okay, whatever the case is, Rabbi Yosef says that he does, he, he marries her and he doesn't need to give his brother, the, the, the get brother, doesn't have to give him anything because he wouldn't be able to sell that property. The ta, that property. It's on passed away. He leaves the wife and he also has possessions of a hundred mana. Hundred money is a large amount of money. Avpishek subasein ela mana. Even though her suba was only one mana, one hundred coins. Right, that's an example. La yimker. He's still not allowed to sell any of the the ninety nine others. Why? Chakol nechasav achrein leksubasa because everything is dedicated to pay for the suba. We don't know what's going to happen, so everything is all of that is there. Well, that was Rabbi Yisif's rule. Amalei Abaya, Abaya says to Rabbi Abaya is a student of Rabbi Yisif. He says, "Bechol hecha damer Rabbanan leilis menachal gal dezavan leav izvini izvini." I know the sages said that you're not let us sell it. That doesn't mean that if you sell it, it doesn't work. He actually gave it. He told his brother that he can have it. But Tanan, look look at what we have. We have a Mishnah. It says, "Beshamay Yomer is talking about the Arusa woman that's betrothed." Beshamay says, "Tim Kari that." She's allowed to sell her own possessions, even though they were going to go her own real estate. You know, the husband was going to be allowed to eat the, the fruits of that after they're married. But Bishami said they're allowed to sell it. He still, light him. He still says she's not allowed to sell it. But everyone agrees that if the sale was done, that it's a valid sale. So in this case also, the brother gave it. I know the sages said not to, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't work. So Shalcha Lakamid Rab Khanina Bar Papi. There's an argument here between Abai and Rabbi Yasef. They sent to Rab Khanina Bar Papi. Shalcha Rab Khanina Bar Papi responds, Kid Rabbi Yasef. The Allah is like Rabbi Yasef. Can't sell it. Amar Abai, Abai says, Atur Rab Khanina Bar Papi, keep it. But Rab Khanina Bar Papi hung jewelry over the Braisa. 
over the um, over over a Yosef statement. In other words, do I have to accept your Panina by Papi just because he, he said something without explaining? So they send another letter to Rab Minyumi, the son of Rab Nechumi. He says that what the brother did was he, he, he gave it to his brother. It's considered given. Okay, you know, this is just getting complicated. Everyone's like taking sides here. So... But if Rabbi Yisif has anything to add, he should send it to me and I'll see if I'll change my mind. So Nafak Rabbi Yisif, Rabbi Yisif goes out, he finds a brisa, the tiny was taught in a brisa. Let's see someone owes his brother money. Okay, umes. The lender dies. Okay, there's two brothers. One's married to this woman. And he also, he has a wife and he also has money. And he lent the money to his other brother. So the Malva, the lender dies and he leaves over a wife. He wants to say like this. Remember, I owed my brother money. Now I'm marrying his wife. I'm inheriting the whole estate. What happens to my debt? You say, well, no more debt. I inherited the whole estate. Right, he inherits the estate of his brother. Then he the the debt should be absolved. Can't say that. He borrowed money from his brother. Then his brother died. He owes it to himself. He can't say that I don't owe it anymore. He actually has to pay the money, buy property. Like, like as if he's putting it back into the brother's estate. What happens with his brother's estate? It's all subjugated to the ksuba. Yeah, he can eat the fruits of the property. See what's a, what, what he's saying? That, that even though he sort of forced the sale on the property. You remember we said that he wasn't allowed to sell the estate. Any property is good sold. But here he sort of like forced the sale on it because he, he had borrowed money. And now he doesn't want to pay it. He doesn't, he shouldn't have to pay it back. We, we don't say that. We say that he does have to pay. So therefore, Rabbi Yosef's claim when the brother says, oh, you can keep uh, half the estate is nothing. Rabbi Yosef has a proof for it. Amalaya Abaya, Abaya says, it's an interesting b'risa that you quoted, but Dilma the Tavalei of the lake. Maybe they're just giving him good advice. Teaching him how to save. <laughs> Steve is just borrowing. He's using his brother as a credit card. Um, they're teaching him you should buy property and, and just eat the fruits of the property. So that's not really that he was that he has to do that. It was just good advice. Amalei. Told the buyer, it's a problem that the uh, explanation because then they might see him. They they extract the money from him. That they're just giving him good advice. They're just telling him how to spend his money. Well, Rabbi Yosef had a very strong support. The only problem is, is that they said. But the support that he had was uh, was not a real Mishnah. That means it's not a real Mishnah. It means it's a forgery. It's a uh, you can't accept that. Why? Why well, can't my time? Why is it a, a why is that an unacceptable Mishnah? See that debt was just money. Now is money subject to the to the uh, to the lien of the ksuba? Metatle ksuba le Personality is not subject to the lien of the ksuba. Gemara says, well, that's not a real kasha because Dilma Rameyer, you may say that price is the opinion of Rameyer, that says that personality is subject 
to the lean of the Ksuba. Maybe he can tell his wife, says, look, I owe the husband money. Your first husband, which is my brother. You're supposed to get money from him. But that has nothing to do with me. So between me and him, I, I've taken care of it and, uh, and I don't have to pay him. Maybe he should be able to say that. Umar says, one second. But Dilma Rabnasani, maybe it follows the view of Rabnasan. Rabnasan is famous for this. The Tanya was taught in a bride to Rabnasan, I mean, I don't know if you have a man of a chavir, but a chavir, I mean, I'm from the same as ever nice and let's say, I'm a lame, Rabnasan, I should ask him like. Rabnasan says that if one person owes another person money, and that person owes another person money, that the third person can go to the first person and say, look, I know I, I never lent you the money, but I lent it to him and he lent to you. So you owe it to me, basically. And that's, they can still, in court, he can't say, I don't know who you are. I never did business. He can't say that. Rav Nassim says that he can go around and make that uh, circle to, to get from the third party. So um, over here also, the wife can say, um, I know it doesn't have to do with me. You borrowed money from uh, my husband. But so what? He owes me money. And that's the, the money that you borrowed is owed to me. So, but what's happening over here is we're combining the opinion of Reb Meir and the opinion of Reb Nassim, and we don't have anyone that does that. So therefore, we'll say that this is not an accurate Mishnah. Now, combining the opinion of Reb Meir and Reb Nassim would be two things. First of all, that the personality is has subject to the lien of the Ksupa. And second of all, that when there's a third party that's involved, that the third party can go to the first party to collect. Those two, that combination of Rameir and Reb Nassim, we don't have any view that holds that except for this Brisa that Reb Yosef is quoting. And so we say that we don't know about that opinion. Right? So we say it's not a Amar Rava. Rava says, I heard Abaya one time saying that this is not a Mishnah. I didn't know what he was talking about. Now I know what it's talking about. It's talking about the argument that he had with Rebiasa about if the brother if that is going back to if the brother tells the one that's doing Yibam, the oldest brother tells the, one of the younger brothers, he says, um, don't give her the get. I'll give you the property that you would have inherited from him. That Rebiasa says that he doesn't have to give him anything afterwards. And he had a support for it. But Abayah said that that's not a good support. There was a fellow that uh, his brother's wife passed away. Well, um, I'm sorry, his brother passed away and left the wife. So he has to do Yibam. Okay. And this is in the city of Masamachsia. Another brother shows up and wants to give her uh, a get. Why? Because he wants to be able to get the inheritance. Which if the brother marries the wife, then he loses all the, this fellow loses all the inheritance. Yeah. Reuven Shimon Levi. Reuven passed away. He left the wife, Dina. Well, Shimon's going to do Yibam. But Levi shows up and what tries to give a get to, to Dina. So, Amalei, so he says to him, my daita, why are you giving a, he tells Shimon, tells Levi, why are you giving a get? You want the money? You want the possessions? I'll give you the money. Amalei, Levi says, I'm afraid he's going to do to me what the that that liar from Thumpadisa did to his. He knows the story. He learned the Gemara. He knows the story with Sir Yosef and Nabaya where they argued about this. So I don't trust you. Amalei, you buys plug up You can take it from now already. Amar Mar Bar Barabashi, Afal Gab, the Chiasra Bimi, Amar of Yechanan, Aimelach of Bear Lake, Meshech Parazu, Late Knulak, Alaka Slashim Yam, Lach Lamidian Kana, Ilim Aimedis Bagam. I know that we have a statement from Rabbi Yechanan that Rabbi brought. And he said that if he tells his friend, acquire this cow from now after 30 days. In other words, pull it now, but it's only going to be yours after 30 days. So it turns out that 30 days later, the cow is in the swamp somewhere. This, the, the ownership changes, and it belongs to the, the new owner. 
Well, the same thing would happen over here. He didn't do Yibam yet, but he tells him, take the money already from now, the money that I'm supposed to be getting as inheritance from the, you can take that inheritance from now. But over there, but he says it's not going to work because Hassam biyade, Hachalav biyade. Over here, it wasn't even his yet. He can't give it. Okay, now the Gemara is um, uh, digresses just for one second. It says, Why are you even asking from that? Or why are you doing that comparison? Rabbi Echanan says that the cow is not acquired to the other person if he says in 30 days that he'll acquire it. It says, like, Gosh, I'm at the like, Depends on the expression that he used. If he says acquire it from now, then it would work after 30 days. But if he says acquire it in 30, in, for 30 days later, just like that, then that doesn't work. Okay. Boy, my name is Yola. Yibim va'achakachilak mahu. Let's see, does Yibim, and then he divides it with the brother. Layasa, layasa It doesn't work. Chilak va'achakach yibim al. Let's see, he divides it first, and then he does Yibim. So it says layasa v'leklam. It doesn't work. Now, maskeflor of sheishes has to Yibim va'achakach layasa v'leklam. Chilak va'achakach yibim mi boy. That the second case was so obvious. If he did the Leverett marriage already, he already inherited everything, and then he divided it with his brother. We say that it doesn't work. If he didn't do the Leverett marriage, and he divided with his brother, you say that it doesn't work. Of course it doesn't work. It wasn't even his yet. It says, You're right. But those are two separate stories. So we had a psak for each one. It's not that we added on. We said, oh, even in the next case, it's not going to work. Kiyasa Rabin Amar Ishlakish. Rabin was another traveler like Ravimi. He came and he said in the name of Rishlakish, Ben Yivam Achilik, Ben Chilik Bachibim. Whether the Yivam was first, whether the whether they divided first, Leos of Leklum, Bilchasa, Leos of Leklum, the halach is that uh, it doesn't get um, uh, divided because it's all indebted to the wife's sibling. And it wasn't really his to, to give to the, to the brother. Leave it over here. Let's do one more piece. Yeah. Uh, one more piece. That's a little tiny piece. Um, um, the sages say there was a discussion over here with the Shemir Yavam. If uh, she dies and there's uh, there's um, she dies. Um, what happens? Yeah. What happens with the property um, that she has that um, that she brought into the marriage and the husband dies and now there's a new husband and she's a Shemir Siyab. What do you do with the fruits that are attached to the ground? You say those fruits belong to the new husband. Umar says, am I? Why do they just go to the new husband just like that? I mean, the, the Yavam, the new husband. But call the Chasar Rechayim Barav Luxubasa. It, it, he doesn't just keep it, keep it. Everything should really belong to, to the Ksuba. I'm sorry, it's not, is it her property or, or is it, um, it's not her property, it's his property, the, the deceased brother's property. Amrishlak is Tini Shalah. Doesn't mean that it goes to him. You have to adjust that. It says Shalai, his. You have to adjust it. It means it goes to her. Okay, let's leave it over there. Okay, have a good day. Thank you. Come on, Maximum Tava. Maximum Tava.